Hey, Kaposi Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today we're going to be talking about routing contacts so that you can get different instruments. So it's way more effective to load up 16 instruments in one contact than it is to load up 16 contacts with one instrument. So, but the problem is what you want to do is you want to send them to their own mixer track so you can affect them individually, control them with the faders, you know, blah, 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 blah. So how do you do that? Well, on this instance of contact, this one right here, if I come up here and hit the output, you see I have done such and such a thing. Now, some of this will be FL specific, but the general concept is not FL specific. So this one, I do not have such and such a thing. So right off the bat, when you load up, you're going to want it. We're going to make this so it's a preset so that every time you load up contact, it's going to load up with the correct setting. I have loaded up contact 5, 16 out. So this has been this one's made to handle 16 outputs. This is not the one you want to load though for 16 out. What this is, 16 out mono. If you want to do 16 out instruments to match your 16 MIDI channels, you need to load up the default one, which I believe can go up to like 64, something really high. But you want to just utilize the 16 uh, MIDI tracks, at least in FL. That's, so that's why I chose that one. But let's say we're going to do eight, right? So what you want to do first is you want to open up your output. Now, down here we have these things. So these are this is basically virtual wiring. And you want to you want to make sure your wires are plugged in the right spot so your signal gets to the correct places. So, in FL, if you come up here to this cog, we have this processing tab. You go to that tab, and then we have this auto map outputs. You want to hit that. Now, what this basically says is, "Hey, these are the names of the outputs that we have going on here." So this this one that has 0 is the track that contact is on, and then this is 1 to the right of contact. This one's two to the right, but then there's the whole stereo mono thing in FL. So don't worry about it. All you need to do is hit auto map outputs and it will do everything you need it to do. So once we come back over here, because it's just, it is really weird because of the way FL does stereo and interacts with other plugs. So basically we need to configure this to, to have eight stereo options, right? And right here, we've got these auxiliary channels. I cover this in my contact from the ground up series, which is this series, but maybe you've skipped to this video. Um, so I'm not going to talk about those, but basically, unless you use them, just un undo them. So we have plug in out. We're going to change that to not connected and plug in out 12, not connected. And it's going to tell me that basically I have to, I have to reopen crap to make it work. Well, I'll show you how to do this. So anyways, not connected, not connected, click OK. And remember, this is applying to the contact instance you have opened. Well, actually, you can make it apply to any. So we basically, we, we've just disconnected them. They're empty. And so that's fine. That's what we want. Next, we need to add, we need 16. Well, in this case, we need seven more stereo tracks to add. So right now, this one has been routed to plug in out one. I'm going to change these. So when you click, a list will show up. And you see we have KT. It's ST1, so it's the left channel, and then we have the right channel. And they're already set up, and the names could change or whatever. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you keep track of where you are in this list, and you put one and two. And the way I got to this menu, and then you hit OK, and so you just click on the, the faceplate. But we're missing channels, right? Well, there's a couple ways you could add channels. I'm going to show you just the most straightforward way. Um, so we're going to go to add channels. And what we need is we need number of channels per... So... For you FL people, this might be a like weird concept. But basically, we need two mono channels to make one stereo channel. So that's pretty straightforward. And other DAWs is way more straightforward. But basically, we need seven uh, stereo, which is the two channels of audio. We need seven more because we already have one. So we just need seven more. And we don't want to delete any new channels or anything. So that's all you need. So you hit OK. And seven more have been created. Now what you need to do is you go, oh, okay, now we need to just uh, hook them up, basically. We've already told uh, FL through that cog menu thing how to interpret the, the channel tracks, how to basically send the signal where it needs to go and get it to the mixer the way we want. Now we need to tell contact how to give FL that information. So what we do is we have these, these outputs and we're going to go, so when you click on the phase plate and you come up here not connected and you select the next set. And so this is where you sort of need to keep track. So you have one and two, and you'll see it's three and four plugging out in. And this is what FL is seeing it as. So we click OK. One, two, three, four. Now we need to do five, six. Five, six. Click OK. Now we need to do seven and eight. You click OK. And you do nine, blah, 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 blah. And 10. 
And you do this for every single set of outputs, right? So you go, you go, oh, I missed one. So you need to keep track where you are. Nine and 10. And you do this for all of them. And that's fine right now. We'll do that for now. Uh, but you you would keep going. You do them all. And you now, of course, because of that whole mono thing, you're going to want to do this in the default contact, not in the 16 out. But you can affect the default from here, which is something you should be aware of. So we have these batch configuration options. Batch configuration, whenever you see batch, it just means it'll do a, it, it'll do it for a lot of things at once. So instead of having to do it separately, it'll take care of a whole bunch of things at the same time, if you're unfamiliar with that. So we have these batch functions, which is which is some great things, but we also have this save current output selection as the default for. What this basically means is our current setup that we have for our output, it'll save that setup as the default. So whenever I load up, the contact again it will always load up with these settings and this one we want to save it as the default for vst plugin 16. you can actually also save it for the eight out in the vst plugin which is the really big one and they even have a separate one for the aax version so you want to be wary of what you touch here but we want to save it as the vst plugin 16 out and you click ok and it's been set up now let's go ahead and test it we, so what we've done here, just to recap, we've hit auto map output, pretty much is all you really needed to know. I explained a little bit more. And then we've come down here, we've added channels and just rerouted them. So this goes to one, two, three, four, and FL will see that as one stereo input. So uh, what we will go is we will load up an instrument here, right? We'll load up a Celestia. Oh, is it gonna load? There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And what now, one thing about contact is check this out. So. We have up here, if you don't see this menu, maybe you're on snapshot, you got to come here and click this little I for info. I prefer to have this one load up by default, but some of them don't. And we have an output and a MIDI channel. As you open up more of them, so we'll open up another Celestia or Celestia. I don't know how to say that. It'll, it'll add. So now this is MIDI channel two. And then we have MIDI channel three, right? So it'll keep doing that, but you see the stereo outputs are always the same. So you have to do this by default. But basically, right now, this is going to stereo output one, which is fine. If I uh, play some notes here, uh, if I play some notes, oh, I'm too low, probably. I'm not getting any signal to my contact. Oh, duh, I'm, uh, that's the different contact. Whoops. What we're going to do is I'm going to load up a, uh, a BSR SO articulate. I'm going to put this on. Don't worry about this right now. doesn't apply to you. Oh, what the heck? I'll put it on seven. And so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move this to seven, port one. I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to put this on two. And I'm going to put this one on three. This is why I have all these up here, because this friggin' sucks. So, okay. It's all set up for what I need to do. So basically now, this is controlling. It's going into uh, this one is controlling one. So if I hit it... You see it's going in one and one is being activated. If I go to the next one and I'm holding alt to keep both these things open and there's a separate setting in here that makes it so that only one of these can ever be there. It's really great. I'll do a thing on that eventually. So you see two is going, but it's still going out one. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and say, hey, go out stereo two. That's what ST stands for. Now it's coming out two, which is DAW inputs three and four. So you see it's this big confusing thing, but uh, it makes sense. It just is a little hard to wrap your mind around if you're not used to it. Oh, and then I've loaded up symbols for some reason here. But you see the symbols are going out one. So let's say we want them to go out, you know, three. So we'll do th stereo three. And here we have them. Now I'm going to move contact over so our numbers will line up. So basically, now we have, we can see now it's coming out the master. So this is an FL thing. So it's uh, these channels are all getting routed out this master channel here. But you see here, three is the symbols, just like we want. And then this one is the Celestia, and this one is the other Celestia. Celestia, And it's all set up. So now you have your routing set up, and you can go ahead and start loading up stuff. And the only bummer is you have to do this. What I end up doing is... I don't always affect things in the mixer anyways, especially if it's like orchestral stuff. So I'll load up just loads of stuff and have it go out the main. Now, if these were all sent to one, they'll all just go out one. And so that's great. But if I want to affect something then, then, I, then I'll just change that one stereo output to be whatever it is I need it to be. Now, I've only loaded up like four or five. If you're doing like the whole 16 like I have here, so I have this already set up. 
So if I load up a, uh, a Celestia here, and we'll load up a couple, and let's say that I want this to come out like stereo output 15. But, and it only matters, I only go up to 16 anyways because I only have 16 MIDI channels anyways. But uh, there, are, there are more ways of doing this, but I just open up another contact at that point. I suppose I could make it more effective, but anyways, so I've loaded it up and it's gonna come out, it's gonna go out stereo output 15, but it'll react to MIDI channel one, which is what I want. I have a MIDI out plugin for this. And basically now, as I play this, you see it's got 15, it's, it's working exactly like I want. However, you might be having weird crap happening. You might have things coming out 11, and then fifth, one channel in 15, just all manner of weirdness. But you've set it all up exactly like I showed you. What's the problem? Well, just make sure you save it as your default configuration. And then just close your DAW, close contact, and then open it up again. And it should work. That's uh, that's that's happened to me, and that's what I had to do. You may, if you still have that problem, you may shut down and restart. If that doesn't work, then, you know, I don't know. I think you did something weird or screwy somewhere. Uh, so, but anyways, in all other cases, it should work. Besides having the problem that it would work up to four and then no further. I was like, what the junk is going on? It took me a little bit to just realize I should just restart. And then it worked. You also want to make sure that when you save it, you're opening up the correct contact output setting you've saved. Because you might be opening up a different one. So if you have like weird uh, instances of contact loaded up, like if I load up the eight, the eight out one, it won't work. And occasionally, sometimes people have clones of plugins. So if I had two versions of the 16 out plugin on my system... I would also have issues because it might be on one but not the other. So you just want to be careful of things. In FL, that becomes an issue because which one's showing in your list. Because it might say contact five, but you might have accidentally changed the name or whatever it is. So you just want to be real straightforward with that and save it correctly. Now, uh, that's pretty much that. Now, if you're wondering about the MIDI port thing, that's a whole separate deal, but I'll show you real briefly. Now, you could use, you probably don't have that. It's a free plugin. You can get it from the synthetic orchestra.com. Org.com. I don't know. Anyways, you can go look it up. It's the BRSO Articulate plugin. And he, he developed it. It's totally free. But if you have FL, you can go to, you can just load up a MIDI out. And what matters here is you go into this cog settings and you have to put an input port. I don't recommend staying on zero because you'll have weird issues, but occasionally it might work just fine for you, but it depends on like what you, what you're doing. Uh, but anyways, I almost always start on port one just to avoid issues with the way it interprets the omni channel of the MIDI spec. So uh, that aside, that's just the thing. I'm not going to like explain craziness, crazy stuff about it. Just going to port one will solve that. You have all these ports. Setting up the port will basically say, hey, send the MIDI information from this to this. And that's pretty much it. So I have these loaded up. So this is one, two, and three. And so I can load this up. So it will send port information and then on each port you can have channels of information up to 16 because fl has a, a piano roll that supports up to 16 channels of information and then you have this output port that doesn't matter you only want the information to get in once it gets in you're good to go outputs if you like you wanted to then send that information that midi information to like another thing but we don't care about that it's all set up so check it out and they automatically cascade the midi channel on port A. So you want to have that. You see the other ones are, are not available. So port A, and so if I play this, you see it's controlling the first one. If I go to channel two, it's controlling the second one. Now I have this one. This I prefer this one because it has been optimized to work with specific sample libraries, and they've got CCs already set up. You could set up a similar thing by just using presets and then loading up that preset a bunch of times. Uh, but this also uses MIDI channels in a really interesting way. It can do dynamic articulation switching with things that use latching key switches. Uh, if they are not latching key switches, then it won't work. Or what, what I mean by latching is you, you click it, and once it's been pressed, that effect of being pressed stays pressed. So it doesn't work with all sample libraries. But that's like a whole other topic. One day I will do a thing for that. But anyways, hopefully this has answered your question. I, I'm doing this because there are tutorials that show how to do this, but... Um, a lot of the time, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like weird. Like, I just couldn't get it to work. They didn't say uh, things that I needed to know about at the time. And so now I'm telling you. If you have any questions, let me know. I will try and help you out as long as you know they're reasonable questions. Or if you know the answer and you see people asking questions, you know, help them out. Like, please. Uh, I appreciate this. Support me on Patreon and have a blessed day. And also the intuitiveness of a lot of this stuff. So first, we're going to start off with the most simple of simple. It is the 
sub bass. So if you don't know what a sub bass is, a sub bass is a low tone, a really low tone, meant to reinforce the bass of your track. So this is, this is used all the time. Sometimes it'll be called separate subs.